What's up guys and welcome back to the Game Show Invitational Game 2 between Scaryfaces and BU. Scaryface is up one game and we have no more Arise since his internet Ten broke or something. Instead we have this guy, Young Hearn, some guy named Zai. I don't know if you guys have heard him. He's going to stand in instead for BU. So BU have claimed another one it seems. So maybe they'll have better <laughs> a better shot in this game too. I'm Mike Loris going to be joined by MRP Dota. What are your thoughts about this stand in dude? Easiest off lane of BU's life. We call them Standing United for a reason, I suppose. They are technically disbanded, but looking real strong in this one, and they definitely were in a position to take game one as well. Just a little bit of maybe an early jump towards the high ground without the buyback on their Sven, as you alluded to earlier, and they pay the price for it. SFC gonna have to look to close them out quickly before Sai takes this one over and maybe takes it to a deciding game three. All right. It is worth noting that, uh, I mean, obviously Zai usually plays off lane for secret, and yeah. BU just lost the player who played mid, right? Was Arise off lane, off lane. Oh, clock. I mean, there was a dual lane, so you don't really know. But uh, yeah, this may juggle their lanes a little bit. I'm personally still pulling for the mind control mid. I love that shit. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, who knows what we're gonna see from BU? Probably still Bingham Necroman playing supports, but uh, who knows? Doesn't really matter anyway as we're going to have a Tusk for the first pick. Looks like Wyvern, as well as that Shadow Fiend, going to be banned out instead in this opening ban phase. Yeah, I said it in the first game. BU did their homework. They took the Wyvern. They banned out the Tusk. This time, first pick goes to SFZ. They banned the Wyvern. The Tusk is taken by SFZ. This is a, a hero that they're very comfortable with, and they're going to look to get aggressive early on. Both teams favoring the mid, State 21, and Mind Control heroes being banned out here. Leshrock. SF and the Queen of Pain taken out early. Can still look for something like a Storm Spirit for State 21. He also plays Zeus from time to time. Uh, but Queen of Pain, SF, definitely two heroes that I see him on more often than not. Yeah, get rid of those comfort heroes. Sometimes the comfort hero is just more deadly than a mm -hmm. hero who is quote unquote a metagame hero. But you know, Tusk has a first pick. We've been seeing quite a bit of it. Undying was previously first banned out. And BU going to grab a Gyrocopter with this as well. So. Definitely looking to put up a little bit more early game pressure in this yeah. game. Probably looking for something like a Rubik or something along those lines for their support. Maybe even third pick. Uh, SF Techies versus Zai. Just to troll him. Why not? Be damn good combo. But <laughs> Here's how to do it, Zai. You scrub. <laughs> We're going to do it to you. See how you feel. Uh, yeah, I, as you mentioned, it's really uh, BU just opening saying, oh, so you want to take this early game, do you? Uh, Dirge Gyrocopter, so that is something scary to snowball into, to say the least. Tombstone Rocket Barrage going to do a lot of work for them, so SFC maybe have to rethink uh, or retool their strategy just a little bit here. Definitely don't want to jump into a, a tri lane containing those heroes. Even if it's not a tri lane, Gyrocopter Undying can very easily go into dual lanes if BU want to mm -hmm. grab someone like a Spirit Breaker to really jam home the early game. Again, they need some sort of stun for the Gyrocopter. Uh, usually yeah. you want something along the lines of Rubik so you could pull the enemy into your Gyro and then Rocket Barrage him down. But they have so many options right now, BU, with these lanes. And it's going to be scary faces to grab the Naga Siren once again. That song was a pain in the ass for yeah. BU in the last game. But we did see Naga Siren do pretty much nothing in the early game. And this yeah. is going to be, this time, a lot more risky since B, you have a Gyrocopter and Undying. You can very, very easily punish a Naga Siren support. It's actually a really good counter to the Undying, though. So I understand the pickup here. You, you just song away, kill the Tombstone off, and then continue to fight. So it does take away a lot of that Undying's potential in the fight. Also, if you're able to bring him down quickly and he's not able to sustain and get a lot of Decay stacks off in the fight, that does benefit you as well. But it does seem like uh, Scary Faces are a little bit predictable uh, with their couple picks, albeit, as I mentioned, uh, they are very comfortable with these two supports. These are here supports that can very easily like bail people out, like with a snowball. Hell, even with ice shards, sometimes you just get a free, uh, get out of jail free card. That obviously in Snare and Song of the Siren, you do the same for from the Siren. So, BU, they're gonna have to burst their targets down, else their prey might escape them. It's gonna be Bloodseeker to be banned out, Broodmother, Io, lots of those annoying heroes being kicked out from the scary faces end. But I mean, I don't really know if Io would even fit in right now. And Io yeah. last game was. I mean, I guess the overcharge was really useful, but mm -hmm. outside of that, there wasn't really any, you know, huge dominant relocate gang. So it was a couple, yeah. but that's about it. 
I think you touched upon the right word there. It's just annoying to deal with. Uh, definitely with the flat cannon from the gyro and the overcharge as well. Burn away those Naga illusions, take away some of the fight potential from SFZ and just the relocate probably not willing to deal with that too much uh, they do want a five man it seems does sfz from game one and with the song of the siren it makes sense to do so so taking away kind of that split push and uh uh gank potential from bu bu gonna go right back for ramsey's dark seer or sorry uh, uh ramsey's dark seer in game one for sfz bu gonna pick that up for themselves in this game too Hmm. So this is here that uh, my control was playing a little bit yesterday. It was mediocre, perhaps, but mm -hmm. up against a tusk, uh, yeah, surge is going to be a pretty useful tool. This is looking a little bit less like it's going to be dual lanes for the BU side. Otherwise, we'd have seen like a more you know, supporty pick, a lion, or again a Rubik, uh, as I was mentioning before. But hey, just put Darkseer up against these already two melee heroes. Ion Shell going to be doing Five some serious work. Remaining. Yeah, definitely. So again, we'll see uh, State 21's Storm Spirit banned out here. Pub Seeker taken out as well from BU, speaking of annoying. And they are going to be a little bit hard-pressed to find something for uh, SFZ for their mid lane, though. But look for something that can get aggressive uh, a little earlier on. Maybe even something like a Brewmaster. We could see the Viper here. He's pretty good against what BU have to offer. They don't really have much lockdown. So for him to walk around in the fights, get his corrosive off, get his slows off on everyone... Can be pretty damn, uh, pretty damn good for SFZ. They're gonna pick up Disruptor here, so it looks like it could be a, a core Got tusk. It. Maybe even they put the Naga in that role. Yeah, scary faces do have quite a few options at that point. It's gonna be a dazzle for BU as their fourth pickup. Not exactly again that support hero that I really expected from BU because mm -hmm. Dazzle has no CC. Don't even make that argument about Poison Touch. Poison Touch is so bad. They it's they so have bad. No it's not whatsoever. gonna be level. Yeah, there's no level 4 poison touch anytime soon so yeah for BU it, it seems like they're kind of deviating away from this super aggressive start with the gyrocopter and undying dazzle and dark seer though they can do some early game yeah. shenanigans they can play very aggressively they typically aren't like all in on the aggro yeah they're kind of just picking stable laners it seems uh they pick up the dazzle early the dark seer was very self-sufficient as we saw in game one ramsey's doing well uh, versus that dual lane of course up against the tusk maybe a little bit uh harder uh, especially with the glimpse available to him uh, to counter up that surge. Interesting carry pickup here for SFZ. This could, of course, be the offlaner, um, but as we just alluded to, very little disable on BU's side at their disposal. Lincoln Sphere going to prove pretty damn good in this one. Stop the homing missile, and that's almost all that can pop it aside from the poison touch. So will be uh, a really nice Weaver game, I feel. Even if you catch the Weaver with somehow i don't know how that's gonna happen from bu you have mm -hmm. to kill the weaver through song of siren through tusk interference and through a kinetic field like there are so many ways that scary faces can interfere with the death of the weaver bu mm -hmm. would kill a kitten right now if they could repick the dazzle into a lion or something like that they need some form of crowd control but like at that point what are their lanes gonna look like there aren't really many mid heroes that have an abundance of cc like they want to go Dragon Knight here just so they could have something that stuns. Because right now they have absolutely yeah. zero tools. And the only chance they kill the Weaver is if Weaver messes up and runs out of mana. It definitely sticks with this five mana theme that they have uh, for BU. They are going to ban out the Viper, BU does. I felt like that would have felt uh, fit well with Scary Faces. It seems like they agree with me. Great call by you there. The DK is going to come out for BU. It adds a little bit of push to their lineup. Uh, it does add a lot of AoE as well later on. So the Flat Cannon on top of that splash damage from the DK uh, could be pretty good. But it does uh, a little bit, it is a little bit concerning for their ability to scale for me. Undying tends to fall off quite a bit uh, later on. Darkseer falls off at some point as well. He can get a lot of utility items for. Uh, your team, but he's not going to do too much damage unless he gets some great walls off. So it is a lot on the back of this gyrocopter for BU. And a lot on the dragon tails. The dragon tail, uh, probably uh, off a shadow blade as well. That should be part mm -hmm. of the build for DK just so that he can get those initiations off. If those land properly, if they you know pick off a disruptor or whatever before the fight really begins, then BU can kind of ignore the Weaver. Like Weaver will need a lot of farm before he's actually a significant threat. Uh, before then, he's kind of just an annoyance. But you could kill off the rest of the other non-Weaver heroes from Scary Faces with the uh, non-amount of CC that B you have. And then, you know, kill the Weaver later. It's going to be Alina, however, for Scary Faces as their mm. last pick versus the DK. And I'm happy to see my control playing the DK. Most likely that means a mid-DK for him. But yep. up against Alina, that's really, really a tough sell. 
He's going to have a rough time for sure. State 21 is a very capable on this Lena and just a generally great mid player. Uh, I love to see mind control kind of on his more space creation. Uh, um, typical mids with the Storm Spirit and the Queen of Pain being banned out, though. He's going to be forced into this Dragonite, so look for him to probably have to bottle crow, and for that reason, maybe a little bit of sacrifice from the early power of the other supports in lane, not being able to get their items out. But I, I like the Lena pickup here. The burst will be nice against uh, a Dragonite who is very tanky against physical damage, uh, but not so much against the raw HP type magical burst. So uh, once he gets up that Aghanim Scepter, uh, guaranteed pure damage should be very nice. For SFZ, who do you, whose draft do you favor overall? I'm still feeling SFZs. Like, I like how mm -hmm. BU have finalized their draft. I think that's the best that they really could have done. But this Weaver is just going to be such a pain in the ass. And yeah. Lena has such an easy lane versus the DK that I think Scary Faces are going to, you know, have a pretty easy time in this early stage. Unless Eknar gets picked off right now. Looks like that's not quite going to be the case. But, uh, guys, BU, they're game down. And they've already won some money for this tournament. But, of course, they're looking to get a little bit more. They're going to put Come With Me on the Gyrocopter. Bignum is going to be playing the Dazzle. Necroman's going to be playing the Undying with Young Hearn. That is Zai. Don't let anyone in the chat tell you differently. Is on the Darkseer. <laughs> so, off lane, Darkseer, Zai. That's something special right there. And Mind Control's going to be playing the mid lane DK. Yeah, on the side of SFZ towards the off lane, we've got Eknart once again picking up his Naga Siren. That's going to leave Ramses on the core tusk. And over towards that top rune, Space 21 or State 21, as he's more commonly known, on that Lena. That'll leave Shadow Wake on the uh, Disruptor. He had a great game on Dazzle in game one, so look for him to make some plays with that Static Storm. And finally, the very versatile Quista going to be picking up the Weaver. It's Weaver versus Darkseer for right now. Even if that's just a 1v1 matchup, which it isn't going to be, Shadowy's going to join him up right there. The Weaver should be just fine. Like, it is very yeah. annoying to have your tower pushed as Quista, but hey, you get like a Rain of Aquila or something, you can very easily kite the creeps, keep your tower for the most part alive, and well, Darkseer now is going to be up against two range heroes. He is going to ion shell everything, and we'll just go straight to the creep wave, but uh, yeah, I don't know if this is a sustainable tactic from Zai. Yeah, he is going to have uh, Necroman join him up uh, as the Undying in lane as well. I like this laning decision from Burden United. I feel like the Gyro should car farm fairly well. Speaking of which, though, he takes a bunch of harass bot lane. Didn't pick up Rocket Barrage at level 1, and perhaps uh, Ramses and Eknart became weary of that and looked to jump in on him. But the first blood is going to be gained top lane. Necroman, they're going to go down. He's going to be the trade over to Quista. Uh, but they do get that extra gold bringing down Shadowy. Man, I did not expect that kill to actually Neither. happen. The structure is, you know, notoriously soft. And Ion Shells with Undying's Decay, of course, making everyone's life a little bit less, is very deadly. But, man, I was more curious to see what was happening on the bottom lane because there's mm -hmm. very, very few scenarios where you don't pick up Rocket Barrage level 1. Yeah. And especially up against a Tusk, that's a very clear, I want Rocket Barrage in case he snowballs towards me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that could have been, well, an even earlier first blood for BU, but it is actually going to be a 1-1 one -one trade for to start things off, and we already can see the aggressive power of this top lane, mostly onto Shadowy. The Weaver doesn't have much to worry about. The Zai effect also rearing its ugly head for SFZ, gaining that first kill, but already, as we alluded to in the draft, Mind Control having uh, just a super poor time mid. He's crowing back his bottle and is at half HP, waiting for that to come out. And uh, State 21 accruing a pretty big CS advantage thus far. No bottle yet on the Lina, though, as uh, she did go for that no talisman. But it is uh, coming out on the Courier, and she will be able to secure this Invis rune top. Come with me. Once again, under a little bit of pressure. It's a little bit late on the draw for the uh, for the Rocket Barrage. So Ramses takes actually no damage from that at all. But still this bottom lane, a very delicate situation. Weaver up towards top, getting hit really, really hard just by the Decay stacks. But again, he's not going to die. He's just going to drop pretty low. And then he has regen enough, I think, to sustain this top lane. But hey, it's at a certain point going to connect onto Shadowy, who only has 400 max HP. It doesn't take that long for a level 2 Ion Shell to grind through that, especially with mm -hmm. a couple more Decay stacks. Yep, elsewhere, things pretty static top lane. They are going to be able to drag back the wave a bit, and this is going to give Quista some much-needed farm. 12 CS to his name, already 15 in Zai's hands on that Darks here. So despite having no Disable, the Decay uh, proving to be uh, applying a lot of pressure to this Weaver. All right, so across the board, it looks like uh, Scary Faces. I mean, the top lane is potentially a little bit difficult, but bottom lane, mm -hmm. the Gyrocopter is still getting his farm, and right now for Scary Faces, they're not able to actually do that much with this kind of just laning support Naga Siren. 
It's not actually a thing unless you have someone to capitalize <laughs> off of that net, and Tusk is definitely not that hero. However, someone who is that hero is the Lena over towards mid lane. I don't think she's going to struggle that much to land a freehand LSA, but with an ensnare to start things off, this LSA is guaranteed to land. Should she decide to throw it? Guaranteed okay, it fine, is. Fine, fine, stay, <laughs> be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Riptide level 2 as well. They may have been able to bring down mind control. He had no bottle charges at the time. So interesting to see that come out a little bit late. Eknart looking to look to secure this 4-minute rune alongside his Lina. Uh, and that's going to force this Dragon Knight back. But it looks like top lane they're going to be able to secure the rune uh, with the Undying for their Dragon Knight. Right, something like a haste rune can pretty much instantly kill off this Disruptor. It's a DD instead, which is not as directly good. But it's still very good if you're going to look for kills on Shadowy. Gotta work through level 2 Glimpse. No kinetic field just yet on Disruptor, so obviously you don't know that. But maybe they're going to be uh, looking to make an aggressive play nonetheless. But across the board, Mind Control, again, he's really, really struggling. But Lina, Denied. if she does decide to leave the lane, which... Oh, come with me down towards bottom. He got netted. He got shard. But it looks like that's not going to do enough. Rocket Brock yeah. keep him safe. But um, if the Lina does decide to leave the lane and gank, because whatever reasons... To just get kills. DK, once he gets level 6, can really easily punish the Lina for leaving by pushing her tower. Yeah, I said I love the dual lanes for BU. I almost hate them for SFZ. I feel like Tusk is just fine to survive this bottom lane by his lonesome and gain a few levels. They really don't have much uh, closing the gap potential with just a Dazzle and a Gyro here. And Eknard, I feel like his services, services would be a much better appreciated top lane to keep back the undying and the darks here but nonetheless they are getting some farm onto their tusk he's picked up 16 cs so it isn't it is something uh to write home about but compared to this darks here not much the case stack goes out top it's the second one onto quista keeping him back he's struggling a bit to find cs and has gone for this early medallion yeah, right now, Eknart is kind of playing like an Earthshaker, like just playing the nomadic role between you know, mm -hmm. the mid lane and some side lane, yet Ensnare isn't exactly a Fissure. I thought Eknart was going to be playing primarily in the jungle, that's what we saw in the first game, and right now, I mean, yeah, Zai and Necroman, they're dangerous if they find the Naga Sign in the jungle, but the odds of that happening are pretty slim, yet she is pushing level 4, which is all well and good, but not really doing much else. Uh, Man, if they could switch the Nog Siren out for a Shaker, then Dying maybe even Scarface would be looking at a couple kills fire. right now. But instead, it's going to be top lane to be pushed. My control with that uh, Dragon Tail at the ready. Looking attack. for a connection onto Quista or Shadowy. He'll settle for that one as well. Glimpse is available, but he's taking so much damage right now with the Ion Shells. They'll bring down the Disruptor. Now apply a little bit of damage to Quista with the Tombstone down. They'll force the Weaver out, but uh, it's still Quista Dying playing a very dangerous game right now. <laughs> The tower is slowly but surely dying because of that corrosive damage, and actually it's going to be Zai to run into an invisible Lina. Did he notice? It seems like he didn't. He's just going to make his way out. Necroman might be punished because of it. Because here comes State. LSA connects. Laguna Blade's available, but they don't even need it. They'll kill off the Undying. Maybe look for a little bit more. Shadowy has that Glimpse. Is in range. Not quite. Going to get fogged out as well. Mind Control needs to TP out. Like, right now, Glimpse still not in vision. And Zai's just going to straight run out of there. That's a TP cancelled by Come With Me, I believe, on the top lane as well. Yeah, bot lane Ramses is a bit out of position, but once again, no catch for this bottom lane. And he'll just put some right clicks into Bignum's Dazzle there. So rotation over to the top lane is not going to get a tower for BU, but it does find a kill. They do trade over the Undying, and now in deny range is that tier 1 for SFZ. So already looking to deny up Quista's farm here. And they should be doing that right away. I don't think there's any reason to keep this tower alive, especially up against the DK, and especially against this pressure where you just keep on pushing in. Yes, he does have a Sage's Mask. What's your what? point? He has, he has the Medallion, which is a little bit uh, <laughs> more interesting, I would say. Scary Faces did go for a lot of Minus Arm in the last game. Medallion's not really <laughs> a super common pickup on Weaver. Like, it's good yeah. on him, because Minus Dying Armor... It's on nice for the Roche healer. as well, Yeah, it's I pretty suppose. sweet, but... No one else is really going to benefit from that until they join the Weaver with the Tusk and you get some cool Walrus Punch shenanigans. What is this Sage's Mask going to become exactly? Is it just casual? I'm, I'm confused. Aquila? Is it Power Treads Aquila? Yeah, it's probably the Aquila. Yeah, that's a good call. Uh, yeah, going for the Medallion early, it's a little odd that I, to see him go back for the Aquila. It's usually kind of a first item, but... Um, does pick up that band of elephant skin, so it looks like he'll finish off the treads beforehand. Uh, mid lane mind control, doing a lot better than he was. Uh, has picked up 23 CS, was involved in that kill top lane, and Dyer's did get bring the tower fairly low, but still, attack. state 21 or space 21 doing fairly well on the Lena. So bottom lane, uh, top lane does get denied, but bottom lane under a lot of pressure as well, simply because no one's there. Quista 
playing some games with Zion Necroman because he can. And over towards mid lane, Eknart looking for that net. Mike Control turning around for a breathe fire. That might end up killing him with an LSI connecting. They still have that Laguna Blade from before. He's going to pop the Dragon Tail just to get a little bit more space. Healed up as well by Bingham. They're going to try to turn things around onto State. Another LSA does connect. They need Breathe Fire, but there's just not enough mana on the DK. He has nine stick charges, which should give him just enough. And now here comes Zai from the back end. Space has to run. Another LSA will connect. Vacuum, Ion Shell not quite going to do it. Bingham has no tools to help out there, except for another heal. Eknart, he's going to be chased away by Necroman, but after all said and done, no one's actually going to die. Zai put it in an ice cage, but that's not going to do anything either. Suddenly, there's four heroes in the mid lane for BU, and with Lina so wounded, they can't really mount a defense, Scary Faces. Yeah, they have rotated Ramses in. He needs to find this XP for his level 6. He's got a regen rune as well, so now it does have the Walrus Punch. Need to be a little bit careful from the Radiant side. The Dragon uh, form is going to be expiring in about six seconds from now. They catch the net while the Tower Aggro is on Mind Control. The Kinetic Field's not going to latch, though. Soul Rip going to keep him fairly healthy as well. Shard's going to go out to delay things. And the TP back inbound from State 21 is going to queue the Aggression Snowball. Going to be queued up on Mind Control. There's the Laguna Blade and the Dragon Slave. They bring him down. LSA is going to miss onto the Undying. They're going to try and focus down this Tombstone. And the call down is going to come through. It's going to hit on three. Eknar going to be dropped before. Zai goes down. The next is going to be finished off. That's the tusk by the decay there. Tombstone just staying up far too long. And the gyro able to rotate in. Make it a two for three in BU's favor. That was even with a botched grave from Bignum. Was trying to keep that DK alive, but uh, must have double tapped it or something and ended up graving himself at full HP. Of course, less than ideal, but when you have a call down that hits onto that many heroes and a tombstone that lasts for that long, scary faces weren't exactly in a perfect position to start off that fight to begin with. So the fact that they got a couple kills, certainly very sweet for them. Yeah. With no static storm it's and no song, it's very hard to compete with a call down and a tombstone because those are such yeah. high impact skills that immediately have their impact. And your disruptor has a level three glimpse. That's great for utility, but that's Radiant's not a fight where you want tower. utility. That's a fight where you need to smash things. Zai, bot lane is going to be netted up. The sleep is here as well. He's going to try and search. He will get sharded. Snowball going to come through. Glimpse back, and the snowball is going to hit. Walrus punch into the air. Kinetic field is there. He'll try to do as much damage as he can before dying, but he'll be caught out. Bot lane 5 to 5 is your score. 10 minutes in. Invis room popped mid lane. Space 21 stalking Necroman here. He's going to drop the LSA, and the Dragon Slave Laguna Blade is there. An easy kill going the way of the Luna. Just a little bit too far away, but suddenly State is going to be collapsed upon by a whole mess of heroes. Mind Control has the DK form. They have a call down, which will slow down the Lina just a little bit. Maybe they get the Dragon Tail. They do. And with the Rocket Barrage damage, State is definitely going to die. Glimpse after Call With Me right into the hands of Quista. He's going to try to go for Bignum with the Grave there. Bignum should not be dying to this Weaver. And Mind Control, well, he has enough stick charges, more than enough, in fact, to get another Dragon Tail out. Seems like BU just really want to get this tower. And if they stun Quista, do they have enough burst to actually kill him off? Uh, nowhere even close, actually. So. Yeah, not, not going to kill off the Weaver, but this tower is probably going to die one way or another. Mm -hmm. I don't think SFZ could even go for a deny here. Yeah, they tried to back off the wave with the Riptide there, but with the Lina down, they don't have enough wave clear, and uh, Quista not healthy enough to continue fighting. Didn't have enough mana for the time lapse there, so very good pressure applied early on from BU here, and the Gyrocopter farming fairly well top the CS board with Quista having to rotate around. So things looking good early on for BU despite uh, a couple of deaths in the side lanes. They're already taking down all three of the Tier 1 towers, and soon the mech is going to be up on Zai. And I would assume some sort of, uh, I, I guess I mentioned Shadowblade previously, I don't know if that's going to be the build for my control, but he's going to be close to an item as well. Once those items come up, then Scary Faces are going to be forced into full 5-on-5 five five scenarios. Mm -hmm. Next time they will have the song, they will have the Static Storm from Disruptor, but still BU getting a lot of momentum because they're getting all these towers, and they will continue yeah. to get more and more deadly as they get more and more items and farm, especially towards those towers. Yeah, 3,000 gold lead in their favor, and that's pretty much three towers down. The net is going to be fogged top lane for Eknar, trying to pick off Zai there. Necroman in a little bit of a precarious position, has been spotted out by the ward there, but will be able to rotate out to the west and make it out to safety. Bot lane, they do know that the darks here and the undying were top, so maybe they look to go in on come with me here. Now, there is a smoke onto Shadowway, but they've actually spotted out the Dazzle running into the pit briefly, and they're not going to collapse on him just yet. Yeah, they're still looking for Come With Me. This guy has 16 armor, so it's a tough nut to crack, especially with the call down slowing them both in on the advance. Rams is going to throw some ice shards, but there are quite a few heroes actually mobilizing on this bottom lane for BU. The field goes up to keep mind control from actually getting in there, but 
I don't know, do BU actually want to go for a Roshan right now? That seems like that's what they're kind of angling for, but I don't think mm -hmm. that's the right decision up against a Naga Siren. Yeah, they don't have enough damage as well to bring it down uh, this early on. No Medallion to their uh, hands, and they do have a mechanism now on the Darks here, so maybe look for them to ball up. Eknart is going to try and find out Mind Control with this net, and he is going to net him up. They are going to be able to glimpse him back into the Static Storm. He's already popped Dragon Form as well. The Snowball will be there. The LSA is going to miss. Dragon Slave comes through with the Laguna Blade, but the Grave keeps him alive. He's going to get surged up, but the Sleep will be there. And now no Grave available. Zai and Mind Control caught out of position, but the Dragon Tail and the turn. Breathe Fire is there onto Eknart. They'll be able to Keep up the Naga though, they bring down the DS and the DK. Dazzle next to fall, three kills going the way of SFZ. And the one thing that they didn't have in that mid engagement was the sleep from Eknard, and it proves very valuable in this fight in the offlane. It is also Scary Faces bringing their entire team to bear, whereas for BU, the gyrocopter was farming. He was low on mm -hmm. mana, I would only assume just like Rocket Barrage, Spam, and whatnot, but also the Undying had no TP, and maybe that just would have been another kill for Scary Faces, but hey, Undying, that's the type of fight that he lives for. If Calldown's gonna kill off Eknart, or something will kill off Eknart, there it is. Naga Siren down, more TP is coming in, Zai needs to get a Surge off immediately once he comes in. It's gonna be onto Necroman. I don't think this is going to be enough, especially with those Ice Shards kind of blocking his path. Another Kinetic Field. So many things that Scarefaces are trying to put in the way of this Undying space. Going to TP out, it looks like he will be just fine. Tower does survive, but man, BU, it looked like they were going to get something done as soon as Mind Control was able to get that Dragon Tail after the sleep, but it was a 3v5 at the end of the day, and the odds in a 3v5, it's not that great, even if you do have a mech. Yeah, we will see come with me looking to farm up this triple stack of ancients now He's gonna get quite an influx of gold from this probably be able to finish off his s and y If that is his choice maybe going for a halberd for the weaver, but probably the s and y He does pick up the yashin now So that'll be uh, definitely a very nice item for, for him to have tank him up give him a little bit of extra damage 15 minutes into this one Mind control actually went for a glimmer cape. This is uh, not exactly the build that you see all the quasi time initiation I suppose yeah, it is like kind of Shadow Blade esque you just get in mm -hmm. with Invis and Dragon Tail someone. Also really good versus the Lina. I think you can yeah. actually, yeah, you can disassemble it as well, so I like this decision from Mind Control. It's a nice utility item, obviously it's not the item that he wants to end up with, but for right now, it's a great item to have in your inventory. Yeah, it's pretty quirky. We mentioned early on how he's uh, resistant to the physical, but not so much the magical burst. He's going to catch a net mid, he's going to be glimmered up, the shards will be there, and the weave on top to keep him safe. So mind control gonna be just fine. No detection available uh, to SFC. Definitely weren't expecting that glimmer cape pickup this early on. Uh, but next time they will certainly expect it. So they have to measure when they actually go for those spell combos. Actually, no, there is dust on Eknart. So going for the DK <laughs> definitely very possible, but very difficult. Like especially with the weave on him, pushing yeah. 30 something armor, 15 minutes in the game, you're doing no physical damage at all kind of demoralizing from there on out, but uh, this is supposed to be an aggressive game for BU. We already see that through their tower pushing, and Glimmer Cape is inherently a defensive item, so they're going to make something happen with this invisible utility they get from DK. Necroman's going to get glimpsed back a little bit. He is in a lot of trouble right now. The Snowball does connect. Walrus Punch is there as well, but the Mech Undying still alive right now. Soul Rip might come out in time. No, it's not quite there. Bingham not in range for the Grave either. Zai can try to finish around. Back you onto two into a Breathe Fire. Eknarth, though, still alive. And there's no damage over time effect that'll actually kill him off here. So Eknart gets to live, albeit barely. Although Come With Me wants in. Maybe a flat cannon hit? No, there's no vision for that. So it's just the Undying to die, and maybe the tower, though, is going to be pushed. In a 4v5 scenario, I don't know about this from BU. Yeah, it's a little bit risky. They do know that the sleep is down, though, and the Naga's Iron has to rotate back to base. So with this Corrosive Breath, they'll put at least some chip damage into this tier 2. Quista going to look to find someone high ground. He does find Zai. They're going to be able to shard him up into the LSA. Dragon Slave is there as well. Walrus Punch into the air. Calldown going to come out a far too late. And everyone pretty much able to dodge it. Come with me. Looking to jump in onto Eknar. Jumps too far forward into that Laguna Blade. Glimpse back onto Mind Control as well. Snowball is there to stun him up. Soul Rip going to keep him healthy though. The Tombstone is going to have to force SFD to focus on that. Too slow to continue chase. But either way, they find two for nil and they are going to look to find more. Glimmer Cape TP out. Committed by Mind Control. They have no stuns though in range. The Walrus Punch is just a little bit too far away for Ramses and they're going to waste a dust charge. But either way, that forces the DK back to base and a good win for BU, especially bringing down that gyrocopter.
They actually had two stuns in range. They had a net from the Naga Siren, which to my knowledge still interrupts, and they had a glimpse as well, so <laughs> kind of let the DK walk away from that one, but man, BU, they're kind of uh, botching these fights very, very slightly. Uh, Bignum had Grave there. Uh, maybe he was just slightly out of range, but the Graves haven't really been coming out on the Dazzle, or from the Dazzle, like we saw in the last game. Of course, that was played by Scary Faces, but uh, yeah, the Dazzle's Graves have been pretty much having no impact in this game, and yeah. Yeah, someone like a DK, a couple of seconds of immunity, or a Gyrocopter, that can make the difference between, well, losing a whole bunch of heroes and gaining a whole bunch of kills. Gyrocopter can try to go for Ramses by himself, Snowball is there, but I don't know if this Snowball is going to end well for the Tusk. Walrus Punch, maybe Shards to make a barrier, come with me, he's kind of slowed down, but eh, not slow enough. He's going to take down the Tusk all by himself, and that may very well lead to a top lane tier 2 push. Yeah, Sigil comes out a little bit late there. Gyro with the extra movement speed from the Sanjin Yasha, as well as his phase boots, easily chasing down Rams. He's not much he could do on that tusk, but yeah, maybe they mount for a push top lane. Seems like that's going to be the call from the Radiant side, and they've picked up a little bit of deep vision as well uh, to try and establish some pressure. Yules is up for Space 21, though, or State 21, and so uh, Glimpse back onto Mind Control. He doesn't catch the Kinetic Field Surge. Going to be there from Zai to keep him safe. So no Yule's combo available onto that DK just yet. Well, the uh, sigil that Tusk popped at his, as his last dying breath actually managed to occupy the creep wave, delaying it for a little bit. Now Scary Faces are at their attack. full force. Bottom lane is pushing in and well, BU, they have a great uh, weave on themselves right now. So killing oh, off any of these heroes with physical damage, that's a lot to ask for. They will put a lot of damage into this tower right now and Scary Faces positioned like they don't really want to fight. I think they have mm -hmm. to use Song to initiate Dyer's here. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, they have the Yules as well, and they are going to jump in with it. The LSA going to come down. The call down looks like it's going to hit on a few, and the Sleep is going to have to come out in response. They have isolated the two cores. Static Storm, Kinetic Field will be either come with me, just able to walk out of it, though. The Tombstone going to be dropped. Breathe Fire onto Space 21. They'll bring him down. They net up Zai in the back lines, but it's pretty much only Eknard doing damage, and now he's been totally isolated as well. Buyback comes out from the Lina. They jump in. The Walrus Punch on the back lines. On to come with me. Time lapse for Quista keeps him safe. Mech going to keep up the Gyro, though, and the Grave is there as well. That's a dieback for Space 21 on the Lina, and now the High Ground Push will commence dragon form luckily for the dire side is going to expire though and bu going to be content with their spoils forcing and die back out from the lena and just a lot of miscoordination it seems from sfz in that fight yeah that's a three for nil in total for bu they have to teleport back because again their dk form is running out but still a couple things went very well there for bu their positioning was perfect such that the static storm kinetic field could have only connected on any one target, I think, uh, unless Shadow, mm -hmm. uh, Shadowy just Radiant's miscued that. But yeah, the Static Storm only connected on Zai, and then everyone kind of went for Zai, which is, I guess it's kind of important to kill the Darkseer, but he's also like one of the tankiest heroes on the BU side right now, so it's very actually difficult to kill off the Darkseer. In the meantime, Gyrocopter's charging the front lines with a call down, with a rocket barrage, with a lot of survivability, given his movement speed and general uh, armor, of course, the weave helping out there as well. So, Scary Faces they make a questionable decision to initiate onto Zai after kind of botching the Static Storm. And that's yeah. even with the Song to open up that fight. So BU take a huge victory, even killing off the tower in the midst of that as well. That's going to give DK his completed Shadow Blade. So now the Glimmer Cape is a little bit more hurdy. And well, with the Tier 2 Tower down up towards the top lane, maybe they're going to look towards Tier 2 Towers in the other lanes as well, since well, yeah. they have so much freaking gold, especially this DK, or no, no, the uh, Gyrocopter rather, had 3,300. And he's going to build a Eye of Scotty. Yeah, it's a good pickup for him, as tanky as he already is. A little bit of greed in that top lane from Shadowway. Trying to get two in the Static Storm. Doesn't latch a Kinetic Field on the Gyro. And he's able to survive and now has a ton of gold to his name. Ultimate Orb, plus 1,200. I feel like I would have wanted to see BU go for Roche there. They had the Illusion Rune onto the DK. Could have tanked that uh, Roche with a couple Illusions. But either way, they're going to mount the Tier 2 push. In the bottom lane, pop that dragon farm once again with the illusions. Gonna look to cut up the creep wave, and it's gonna be no defense mounted early on from SFZ. They do pick up the Lincolns on their Weaver, but Quista, not the greatest timing on that despite having Treads Medallion. 22 minutes, and it looks like the defense is gonna be a little bit too late from SFZ. Well, 
line of defense that is there is going to be a 4v5 as Gyrocopter is still a little bit far away to this party. Zai going to surge himself forward, but he gets Static Storm stuck in the kinetic field as well. Has a mech and the Tombstone is going to die. It occupied a lot of scary faces time, but that's about all it did. Now an Elsa, that's not going to connect. Ektar in the back line actually got caught with the Rocket Barrage and the Dragon Tail. He's down. Bingham graving himself. Straight TP out. He's going to survive. And Mind Control, he's still in Viz, looking for space, although he gets caught with the LSA, dropping pretty low, but he's fighting to the death. Laguna Blade? No, it's cancelled by Lina. She ends up dying as well. Obviously, the Weaver, the only one to survive because they just don't have enough stuns for him, but everyone else in Scary Face is down, and they kill off Zai only. Come with me at full HP, Mind Control pretty much full HP, Necroman as well. And now that Tier 3 is under a lot of pressure, luckily for Scary Faces, there's no more Dragon form, but still, this might even be a lost Tier 3. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it. They don't have much to deal with this Weaver, but he's just not scary enough for them to care. They have so much pressure early on, so much early game presence. They're already breaking high ground here, 23 minutes in. The first tier three is down. A uh, little bit of a misplay from Lina, it seemed, in that one as well. The glimpse probably on the wrong target. Shadow able to TP out under the grave. He probably could have glimpsed him back with one HP, killed off that Dazzle, but... Either way, yeah, poor fight for SFZ all in all. The Tombstone taking a little bit too long to kill, and they're able to do work on top of that. So SFZ not looking too scary at this point. The Yule Scepter used offensively by State 21 wasn't able to keep him up dueling against that DK. I don't know if you're getting the same vibe, but it just seems like scary faces are a lot more panicky in this game. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, using the kinetic field on one here, or the Static Storm, rather, on just Zai is less than ideal, but that's because Scary Faces were all clumped up and they kind of yeah. had to just to make sure that they didn't get a, hit by a four man vacuum wall. But Scary Faces, like, especially in the last game, we didn't see like the many positioning errors from them. So mm -hmm. the fact that these positioning errors are actually there is quite surprising to me. Tier 2 Tower is going to drop Quista getting into a man fight right now. Zai vacuum back Eknart, unfortunately, in between the missiles. There's no follow-up there. Now he's in a little bit of trouble, however. Gets healed, gets graved, backing himself up. And now State gets caught with the Rocket Barrage and the Dragon Tail Fire Blast. That's going to be enough to kill off the Lina. That's one free kill. Tombstone is down in not a great position. Yet this time they have a lot of duration left on this Dragon form. So at least this tower is going to take a little bit of damage. Come with me charging the high ground. Both him and my control stuck in a kinetic field. But this tower slowly but surely is going to take quite a beating. With no Lina, I don't know if Scarefaces have enough damage to actually kill off any of these heroes. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they do. They are going to get the Dragon Tail onto Quista. The Sleep is going to try and keep him up. He will be able to time lapse out. But still, do they have any follow up here? The Vacuum Wall is still available for Zai. And he's going to just have to back off. The Dragon Tail is there onto Quista. Vacuum Wall is going to be able to bring down the Disruptor. They bring Quista very low as well. One last right click. The Snowball not there in time from the Tusk to keep him up. He's down for 50 seconds. No buyback. GG is called under 30 minutes. And the Zai effect seems to be a pretty significant one for BU, just completely outplaying SFZ in this one. I think a lot of this fight was just Undying's Tombstone being a threat, Zai's combo being a threat, and forcing Scary Faces into uh, less than ideal positions. We mentioned that Weaver, I mean, they had no uh, crowd control effects for the Weaver, and that held true. Quista only died that one time at the very, very end, but the rest of the heroes, they couldn't actually do anything. Like, Eknart's sleep was was there, but it, again, didn't do anything. Disruptor's static storms were less than ideal. Ramsey's tusk didn't really do that much in the grand scheme of things, so uh, Scary Faces may just be a little bit tilted after, you know, this performance, so we'll see if they can bring it back for Game 3. We are going to a third and final game, guys. I'm Mike Doris. I've been joined by MRP, and don't go anywhere. It'll be coming up very shortly.